Hey. <laughs> Hi, Liz. I just saw you wave. Um, I'm just scrolling through. Oh, it's so good to see your smiling faces. For those of you who did turn your cameras on, a very Merry Christmas. All right, let's get started. Well, first of all, I, I do want to personally dedicate the sermon to Bill Creevy, who died earlier this month from COVID. He was a light to all who knew him. Let us pray. O oh, divine light, shine in our hearts and minds and illuminate your word for us today. Amen. Oh, friends, we made it to Christmas. Oh, the holidays I know have been very different this year, but oh, how we so needed Christmas. I don't mean the commercialized Christmas, of course, although I do hope you all received your Christmas gifts on time. But what we are talking about is true Christmas, the Christmas of hope and salvation of God incarnate, of Emmanuel, of God with us. Soon, this year of 2020 will be behind us and a new year will begin. I know we're all ready for this year to be over. As I have been reflecting on our gospel reading, the verse that has been repeating in my mind is verse five of the first chapter of John. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Now, the thing about darkness is that it's really not a thing in and of itself. Darkness is not really the existence of anything. In fact, darkness is absence. In the dictionary, darkness is defined as an absence of light. When we think about darkness in this way, we realize that for us this year has been a year of many absences. It has meant for us an absence of life as we have known it, an absence of safety, an absence of dear loved ones, whether temporarily due to travel restrictions or the far greater absence due to death. It's been an absence of income and financial stability. And with George Floyd and Breonna Taylor also made absent, there has been a continued absence of justice, an absence of, of peace. And as far as what has been absent in our government, let me just leave that to you to fill in the blank. If ever there was a dark year in recent collective memory, certainly this year of 2020 is it. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. When I think about my own life, I don't know how easy it would have been to believe that light will shine when in the midst of my own darkest moments. Maybe you've been there too. Maybe some of you are in that darkness now when darkness seems greater than the light. What purpose does this darkness have for us? In my work as a hospital chaplain, I encounter patients and family in some of the darkest moments of their lives. A new diagnosis, a difficult chapter in a long chronic condition, and then the moments of death and dying. I recall one encounter I had during my residency when I was just starting out as a chaplain. I was reaching the end of my day and remember walking towards the elevator wondering if I should do one more visit before making my way back to the office. I walked past the room and noticed a woman sitting on the edge of her bed with her face downcast. Now it was seeing her downcast face that gave me the nudge in my heart to go in. 
I gently knocked on the open door. Her eyes briefly made contact with mine. I introduced myself and asked how things were going. After a moment of pause, she spoke about her illness, her reason for being admitted to the hospital. I listened as she shared how frustrated and tired she was. I don't remember all the details of what she said, and I really don't remember what I said to her. I don't think I said much. I believe I did ask to offer a short prayer, which she had accepted. But somehow by the end of the visit, she was smiling and even joking, and her eyes, which were downcast, now had a glimmer in them. The light in her eyes had returned. She told me that she was at her wit's end and had prayed for God to help her just before I walked in. Now that visit may not have been more than 15 or 20 minutes, but we both acknowledged and we felt that God must have brought me into her room that day. Fast forward a year later, I noticed a man, obviously a visitor, he was wearing a visitor's badge. He appeared to be lost. I asked if he needed help finding where to go. He explained his wife was in surgery and he was waiting for her. I then introduced myself and offered, well, you know, I'm the chaplain. If you need anything, or your wife needs anything, let me know. And then with a look of surprise, he said, oh, the chaplain, yes, my wife would appreciate seeing you. And, as, and I asked what her name was, and I was surprised because I recognized her name. Of course, I remembered her. He remarked that my visit with her a year ago had made an impact on her. And when I went to visit her later after her surgery, she informed me that during the course of my visit, which I don't remember, I had shared the word endurance. And that word endurance is what got her through the last year. She had the word endurance engraved on a stone and made into a magnet, which she placed on her refrigerator. Now, I will say this is not a usual encounter, but I felt like it was a divine gift at the beginning of my career to help me more fully understand the value of my work. All I did was bear witness. John the Baptist came to bear witness to the light. In my work, I was bearing witness to her pain. I was present in the midst of her darkness and suffering. I believe the light of Christ, which is in, within me, within you all, within all of us and within her was able to shine. All it really took was to be present in the midst of darkness and absence, to fill the void. And in this particular situation, the word, well, the word endurance was made not flesh, but into a stone magnet. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not and does not overcome. Truthfully, I say these words holding both the sadness of the darkness and the hope of light. But today, my friends, the light does feel brighter. We are seeing light in our dark times. A vaccine is being distributed. Sadly, yes, too late for too many, but to know that the end of this pandemic is coming is such tremendous relief. The elections are over. Yes, its results were contested, but no longer. And we are counting down to inauguration days, which is, which is 24 days from now, inauguration. And what a relief that will be. Yes, collectively, there is so much more hope in our world. Where are you at, my sisters and brothers? If you are feeling darkness, I pray for the light of Christ to shine on you. May God rekindle the light in all our hearts, the light of grace and truth 
found in Jesus the Christ. May the light grow brighter than the sun to fill all darkness, to fill all absence with a light of hope, salvation, justice, truth, and grace that darkness cannot overcome. Amen.